Mr. Dilip Chenoy, Director General Fiki, Mr. Arun Kumar, Mr. Deepak Kumar, Mr. Satish Pai, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin this presentation by expressing my thanks to Fiki for inviting me as a guest of honor during this event on landscape for non-ferrous metals in India 2030, opportunities, challenges, and growth, and to express my felicitation for the successful organization of this conference, which has brought all of us here to discuss the opportunities for Indian non-ferrous metal industry and resolve the challenges it faces. I would like to stress that my speech is focused on bilateral potential in mining sector relations between India and Peru. I would like to start by presenting my country in the mining sector. Peru, with 1.38 million square kilometers is the third largest country in South America after Brazil and Argentina. Besides its richness in all sorts of natural resources, Peru is quintessentially known worldwide for its polymetallic mining sector. Approximately only 20% of the Peruvian territory with mining potential has been explored, and more or less, only 6% currently being explored. As you can see, Peru is the sixth worldwide producer of gold, the third in copper, second in silver, plus lead, single tin. Now, I want to highlight that in Peru operates virtually the world's entire multinational <coughs> mining corporations. As you see in the table, China, Canada, and the United States will account for 53% of investment in the Peruvian mining sector in the next few years, according to the guide of investment in the Peruvian mining sector and by Ernst and John. The latter show that China will be the leading foreign investor in Peru during 2017-2018, with its company expanding 10.1 US billions or 21.6% of the capital. The massive investment are expected to consolidate Peru as the second world largest copper producer, second only after Chile. As I mentioned, the Chinese investment is big in Peru, and is especially regarding seven companies operating till now, particularly looking for ore, iron, and coal. Let's now talk of India investment and trade in Peru mining sector. Five companies have currently invested in the mining sector in Peru. IFCO has a major stake in a large phosphate mining operation in northern Peru, but still unexplored. Similarly, Swari Agro partnering with Mitsubishi has a 30% stake in a large role for faith, for faith reserve in the same area. It is estimated that India's present investment in the mining sector in Peru is to the tune of only $30 million. So it means it is not relevant in international investment terms. <coughs> 
Traditional buyer-seller money relations are good between India and Peru, as you can see in the table. But I believe that now it's time for India to seriously start investing in Peru mining sector. But you must ask why invest in Peru mining sector? I consider there are four reasons. It will take into consideration the following factors. First, current and future need of India for non ferrous metals, particularly copper, lean, zinc, in order to sustain its economic development, requires to be secured in long-term supply. Second, the current international non-ferrous metal exploitation time life around the world are shortening, and in India has not secured yet its long-term supply. Third, the increasing investment advantage of China, China over India in the mining sector around the world and also in Peru secures for China for China is long-term supply. Fourth, the huge metals and non fertile metal resources of Peru are open for India if India decides to invest in Peru. Hence, it is time for India in its relation with Peru to move beyond traditional buyer-seller relationship and progress towards a long-term strategic partnership via investment, which will guarantee in the supply of the metals and non-metals required for each industry on a secure and long-term basis. <coughs> Considering that India is a major, a major importer of non ferrous metals like copper and its, its products, aluminum and its concentrate, I hope that this conference will be the starting point for India to invest in Peru mining sector in a similar factor than China. For those companies interested in investing in Peru in the mining sector, I recommend to review the publication Peru Mining Metal Investment Guide 2017-2018. It's a very comprehensive information about the mining sector. It is available to internet. You can download it directly by putting the name of uh, this guide. Or if you want, you can ask in the, to the embassy. Here we have the present of our trade counselor who can uh, reply to all your questions regarding investing in Peru. Before I finish my presentation, I want to invite to all of you to participate in the third International Gold and Silver Symposium that will be held in Lima from May 29 to May 31, 2018. The event is organized by the National Society of Mining, Oil and Energy of Peru, with a focal objective of boosting awareness in the sector of mining and finance of potential natural resources, mainly gold and silver. Only as a reference of how important is the International Gold and Silver Symposium for the global mining sector, last year its 12th edition was a success with 800 participants from all over the world. Once again, I want to express my congratulations to FIKI for organizing this event and offering a platform, offering a platform to support and further the cause, the cause of non-ferrous metal industry, while discussing its growth prospects, probable challenges, and investment opportunities. It's a platform for both the industry and the government to leverage upon. I wish the conference a great success. Thank you very much.